everyone. Welcome back to Indie Taunt Fall Follies 2022, where we are bringing you some excellent speedruns from all over the world while raising money for Caldwell children. My name is Holly, and I will be your host for the next couple of runs today. And right now, we have the handsome Aishma set up to show you Trek to Yomi. And not to apply too much pressure here, but he did almost get a world record yesterday, so oh, you are not going to want to miss out on this one. Aish, uh, whenever you're ready, feel free to get started. Yeah, no, absolutely no prayer for you, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, like we all heard, I'm Aishu. I'm going to be running Chuck to Yomi for you. I uh, also have somebody on commentary. You might already know him because I tend to drag him into different online marathons. If you wouldn't like to go ahead to introduce yourself. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Matt Ponton. Um, I mainly do speed running for Samurai Jack, uh, Battle Through Time, but uh, Aishma has dragged me along with him to this highway to hell, uh, always known as <laughs> Trek to Yomi. Um, so let's let's uh, see how if Aishma can get that world record or not. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be a thing because you might have seen me already run this game a couple of times during other marathons. However, today we're going to be speedrunning this game on Ronin difficulty. Now, Ronin difficulty is the actual quote unquote hard difficulty of the game. You might have seen me do Kensei, you know, the quote unquote one hit kill mode or Kabuki, which is basically easy mode. Now, hard, uh, Ronin is basically hard mode. So that means we have a lot of enemy spawns, they have a lot of health, they deal a lot of damage, but we can actually survive more than one hit this time. So, you know, if something would go wrong, we have the option to make it right. But uh, yeah, this is basically the longest category of the game because enemies have so much health and there are so many of them and we have to cut them all down. So um, this will take a while. However, since we're building here for a good one and a half hours, uh, I guess we just jump right into the run and see how this goes. So timer starts once you see the skip cutscene button in the upper right corner of the screen. So let me just start the game here and I will start skipping the cutscene in three, two, one, go. And here we are, this is Jack Yomi, and I think the first thing that you will immediately notice is the black and white, because this game is only in black and white, believe it or not. Because the creative director of the game was so much in love with uh, you know, the Akira Kurosawa movies of the time that he decided to, you know, try and get this into a video game. Yeah, I mean, unless you have the PC version, right? Exactly. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> well, no, it's just a, you know, there's a modification out there someone was nice enough to spend all the time and hard work on to basically remove the black and white filter for those who wanted to play through color. I know some, sometimes mm. the, the contrast can hurt the eyes a little too much. Um, yeah. But other than that, like it's, it's, it's still a great game, even in black and white, and they did a lot of good, good work to, um, put, to, to have that like old, old grainy film. Uh, filter to it so it's definitely worthwhile to play it as is um, on any on any console because i think it's available on the xbox the playstation and the uh, pc epic games and steam store yeah it's basically available everywhere but on the switch as far as i'm aware now, and yes, right the game here, is actually in full color, color, as Ponchon right? just said. It's just that there is a black and white filter applied to it after it. So that mod just, you know, basically removes it and lets you see the actual color that the game is in if the filter weren't there. Yeah, to keep sorry, all the textures there. like... No, no, sorry. To keep all the textures balanced, like... Or to keep the, the contrast balanced, they, that's why they, mm -hmm. they all the textures are in color, even though they, the game yes. runs in black and white. So it's not like they hand-painted black and white textures. Um, yeah. But right now we just finished the training mode sequence, um, which you have to go through every single time you start this game. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I think that is like that one of the criticisms. That is like one of the criticisms that I have a bit for this game. That I don't mind the training session so much, but all the tutorials that keep popping up, they just kind of take you out of the experience sometimes, especially if you play the game a lot, because you already have to mash the triangle button to get rid of them, and can be a little bit annoying, I think. Yeah, and sometimes it even leads to some graphical bugs where like uh, the panel will mm. stay up there, or you know, because it, because you triggered the complete when another one popped up or something, and. So it can get just annoying, but there's no actual gameplay hindrance to it. It's just a, a yes. UI thing. Um, right now, we're basically going to the first stage here, uh, where we're playing as Hiroki um, as a young adult right now. Um, he's been in training as a samurai, and he's uh, some 
bandits have decided to attack the village where his mm -hmm. master has gone off to go fight them. Um, and we're going off to see if we can help out, help our master, even though he told us specifically to stay behind in the dojo to look after his daughter. His granddaughter, I think, right? Yeah. Which is Aiko, you know, he's basically our childhood sweetheart. She's following us around because apparently she knows a quick way through the village in order to uh, catch up with Sanjuro, our master and her father. And uh, this is where we will run into the first bandits. So this is basically the first stage, um, and you're a young adult here. Um, you're basically it's it's going to be a pretty much a hand holding event uh, up until at least we get to like the sixth or seventh kill spot, where it's trying yeah. to teach us how to how to move through the game. And um, there's basically, as you can see here, he's running th in three dimensions when he's uh when he's exploring or trying to get from point to point. Um, and uh, but when we go up to a battle, it turns into a two dimensional axis, even though the enemies are able to use three dimensions. So you can't really see it too well in this fight because it's one-on-one. -on -one. But in, when you have multiple enemies Dude. that are circling around you, this guy just won't die. <laughs> right? That's the toughest I've ever he seen in Zoom. not <laughs> having that. He was, he's constantly circling back and forth. So as you can see here, the enemies are coming off from you know the third dimension, even though you're stuck on the left-right motion uh, during battle combat. Um, and each of these sword attacks have like a three-dimensional hitbox to them. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, you can sometimes catch them when they're not fully aligned on the axis, but it's very risky to do so, especially if you're doing Kensei mode, but we're not doing that, thankfully. Uh, what you're basically seeing a lot of here for Ishma is that he's going to do, like, a two-hit string, and that will tr tends to trick the AI into immediately attacking, so you can get a parry off of. Mm -hmm. Uh, almost immediately. And these little, like, uh, shrines that you're seeing uh, Ishma get are basically a... Uh, uh, checkpoint system should he somehow accidentally succumb to the sword. Oh, um, now, accidentally now we run out of the entire stage. Yeah. yeah, so you have two resources in this game, your health and your stamina. Um, there are upgrades for both meters and on this difficulty, and a lot of the uh, fight for the for the fastest time is, is basically deciding on like when you should go out and grab an extra resource or not because sometimes you know, just attacking the enemies or blocking their attacks can like mean seconds off of a boss fight but it could end up being a few seconds to grab grab the item so we're just taking out these three three guys here and then i think we're going to be getting our first upgrade soon uh it's after the next few uh next two boss uh, bosses enemies well, so on a while out, oh, the, every enemy is a boss. <laughs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> but since you know the enemies are so tanky, they are kind of like boss fights in a way, because if you do make too many mistakes, you can very easily die in this game. Basically, uh, the motto of this run, or basically of this game, is if it looks easy, I'm doing well, but if I don't, uh, you can see how hard it actually can be. Nope. That's not what I wanted to do there. Especially gets annoying later in the game when you have some projectile weapon enemies who spawn at the back end mm -hmm. of the battlefield. Yep. There we go with the upgrade. And that upgraded our health, right? Or was it our stamina? Uh, that was stamina. Okay. <laughs> Stamina, stamina is basically a very important resource, obviously, uh, if you play any like the Dark Souls games or anything else with stamina but <laughs> um basically the idea is that like as, as long as your weapon is sheathed you'll regenerate set stamina so there's times during a battle where we might wait like you know a half second for us to shield our weapon so we don't drain our entire stamina before we get into the next battle by running yeah because while you run you you, you basically have your seal, sword still out from the battle and it, mm -hmm. then yeah the, the basically uh, destroys your stamina by, by yeah. running to the, to the next area. Yeah, we're stamina already here management is probably one of the most important factors in this run. And that, that's where like the tug of war of like grabbing the stamina upgrades or not are, right? And that was the end of the first chapter. Luckily you only have to hit him once. It doesn't kill him, but you have to hit him <laughs> once. Imagine if you would kill him there. So now we've teleported in time to the future, uh, or I guess the present. <laughs> uh, now, now we've we've grown up to be a uh, an adult. Uh, Aiko is our you know 
uh, girlfriend slash wife. I don't know for sure mm -hmm. if they were married. Um, yeah, they never stayed, but it's heavily implied, I guess. Yeah, uh, basically what's happened is that the uh, samurai, a group of samurai at the village uh, heard about a bandit attack in a nearby uh, city. And uh, most of the everyone except for Hiroki uh, got uh, captured and are taken to that city. So now he's off to try to set, to save his samurai uh, uh, squad. Hello. If you can figure out how to climb a cliff. <laughs> right. That is so hard to do, apparently. It is, it is really, I don't want to say awkward, but like it, there's times where like the hit collision, like you have to hit, be in the right area with the right direction. And sometimes it can, when you're in the flow of it, it can be a little annoying. So, but as you can see here, you know, there's enemies that are just like waiting and biding their time, but by walking in that three dimensional circling space. Um, but again, you can only attack left or right when you're in the battle, battle uh, mode. We should be getting the first stun ability. Coming mm -hmm. up here. I think we just got just it. Just right? got it. Yeah, okay. exactly. So we just got a three-hit combo that basically, if uh, if Ashima lands the, the third hit, it will stun the enemy, and we can go for an insta kill. Um, and that insta kill just will like regenerate that. our HP bar. Um, so we'll use that. Now sometimes you might it might be faster just to try to take them just to, just to kill them because some enemies have lower health than wasting mm -hmm. time trying to do the uh, the insta kill, but uh, other times you just need that extra health or that invulnerability that, that comes out because the enemies are a little grouped up. And there's really a lot of split decision making being here, like how much health do the enemies have left? Do I go for the execution? Do I kill them normally? Do I need the health? Am I safe for the next fight? Uh, stuff like that. So. There is really a lot of, um, you know, nuance that goes into all of this that you might not even notice if you just watch it and you don't know the mechanics behind it. Uh, but as soon as you get into it, you know, you can kind of see like all the nuances happening on screen here, which is pretty neat. Because it just kind of feeds back for me into like, you know, the whole samurai thing. Another thing I wanted to note, note was that the sidle that we just had across that cliff, I haven't gone back to verify after patch updates, but the game, the PC games for Windows, um, or I guess games for PC, I forget what it's called, but, uh, or Game Pass, the Game Pass for PC uh, mm. version of this game. For some reason, like, the sidling that you have on that case, and all those instances where you do have the sidle, are are all, like, double the animation times, so slow down 50% in animation, so it's really a bog to get across those. <laughs> it's really and, weird to think that the console version might actually be faster this time around. <laughs> Well, it's just the PC, just Game Pass PC like version. Like Steam and Epic Games version don't have that issue, and so it, it's really weird. And I, well, I never went back to the P Game Pass mm. version to see. That could be a, a, a difficult fight he just he just had because of the way that the the bandit with the bandana, the headband, like sometimes is very aggressive. But we get to a little mid boss fight here with a guy who has armor in everywhere but his face. Didn't help him with that to kill though. Not really. Yeah, like the armored enemies you kinda always want to execute because they have a lot of health, especially on one difficulty. So fighting them normally takes a while if you don't go for that stun execution combo. This area might might be uh, it's pretty much a gauntlet of you know medium and medium to easy enemies, but like you have to watch your stamina bar because you want to like sprint to the far right, but then if you're if you're just holding down the sprint button the whole time, you're gonna run out of stamina. Mm -hmm. So you'll see like Ashma like just cancel out of the state the the run every so often just just to re just give him a small little few frames of a uh, stamina recovery. I mean, you've seen me do that like in the first chapter where I accidentally run out of stamina and it slows you down so much and it also um, disables your blocking ability, which is like bad. <laughs> if you can't block in this game, you're basically dead. I do keep in mind you and can now, still parry enemy attacks, that is still available, but you know, when you're out of stamina and you're basically one hit away from death, you tend to panic just a little bit and then being only able to parry uh, makes it like really hard to get that off. And now we've reached the village that supposedly our men have been captured mm -hmm. and taken to. You can actually cancel out of the animation of pushing this cart here, so you don't have to push it all the way to make it high. Yeah. 
You basically want Hiroki to take one firm step forward and then you can cancel out of that. One thing we haven't talked about as well is that uh, as Hiroki, you don't have just the sword, you also have the ability to throw projectiles, such as at this point, uh, Kunai's, um, which in mm -hmm. some enemies' cases can take them out immediately. Um, but I think uh, it's pretty much just on the easy enemies uh, yeah. on this difficulty. Most people have I think a lot not even the easy enemies on this difficulty, like Ronan, like everything has so much health that it will always survive a hit. But to be fair, I haven't even tested it. I still feel like Kensei, uh, if Kensei wasn't a, um, <laughs> didn't have the difficulty of medium, if it had like the easy difficulty, it definitely would be the fastest run possible. Absolutely. But yeah. no, no one's been able to do a deathless Kensei run yet. <laughs> yeah. And every I mean, time, every time yeah. you try, when you <laughs> when you make it to that next chapter, and you and you all of a sudden you die, and you're like, "Well, I'm going to respawn back 20 minutes." You're like, "Well, that's a death run." Absolutely. These guys so have if you some, haven't uh, seen the Kensei runs yet, you d every enemy dies in one hit, but the bosses, but you also do. So you can kind of imagine how hard it is to run that game on Kensei difficulty. It should also but be noted that, thrilling. that um, Aishma I don't think has the ability to block from back turn yet. Um, so he has to manually decide when to turn around, otherwise he might get attacked by someone sneaking up behind him. Nice so basically what I found uh, how this c category basically works is like every enemy has a quote-unquote weakness when it comes to the combos that you're using and you're trying to basically maximize that like for example the normal enemies here you can always like get two hits in and then they um, will go for the counter attack that you can parry and then you can kill them with a parry uh, counter like the guys with the straw heads on they can be a little bit random in what they do so it's generally just a good idea to go for the stun gens that's them once more to kill them and stuff like that so it's always if you see an enemy you know just default back to the combo that you know will kill them quickly so it's just a lot of pattern recognition in a way to see which enemies are you facing which combos do you have to do and that will keep uh, getting more complicated over the course of the run because we will be picking up more elaborate combos to fight them with and potentially you know kill them even a little bit faster so it's always evolving in what you do over the course of the run and then you always have this one guy. Those, I think it's like the band, the headband guys always gave me trouble because the, uh, like they they they're very finicky on like the spacing. Mm -hmm. Like if you get one one pixel too close or, or one degree too close, like they'll counter hit you just because you misread it. Like yeah. yep, you, know, you end up playing footsies with them with the, with a sharp bladed sword. Oh, ran out of stamina again for just a second there. This is one of those other instances where uh, you have to be very careful about your stamina because of another gauntlet mm -hmm. of enemies. But we're getting to the boss of stage two right now, um, which hopefully our men are still alive. <laughs> now let's see about that, huh? Another gauntlet ending with the armor. Luckily, the armor guys also have very heavy, uh, slow swing attacks, so mm -hmm. it's very easy to just counter hit them into the stun animation. So you can just with the armored guys, it's like they always go for that heavy overhead swing first. Now, if you don't parry that, you will actually get stunned and probably die until the stun wears off. But uh, you know, it's like always easy to engage in the fight with them in the first place because you know what will happen, so you can actually prepare for it. This is basically yeah, this... the end of the of the of the bandits here, and you find you just found out that um, your men were still alive. That's good, but then they all died. That's bad. All right, you can see them in the background there at the steps. Sadly, you were witness to your to their execution. So we're basically just trying to like pummel the guy right now with some aggressive attacks, hoping that our stamina doesn't run out, and then maybe land a parry to get a double hit. <laughs> Ah, Whoa, our first death. I was afraid that would happen. Good thing you hit that checkpoint. 
Right? I'm noticing you're doing the, the light, light, heavy, which is probably like a heavy. Uh, I think on the easier difficulties, Aishma uh, would use like a heavy, heavy combination because it takes out half the bar on the on the easier difficulties. But he's doing like the full light, light, heavy option. It won't stun the boss, uh, but it, it does keep him, keep him at bay. You can also block cancel that attack, so. Um... God, he just keeps going oh, for the same that exact. attack. We've oh, already massive. seen that ending before. You got, you got to change up your endings, Ashma. I'm trying there. This time, choose the timeline where you win. <laughs> trying. Come on. Oh. Okay, Starting this time I was good on the spacing. There, there we go. go. Yeah. We finally got it. Now, we just skipped the the, no, the the news that apparently this was all a diversion to get the samurai away from the from, from mm -hmm. the from the main village and uh instead the bandit leader the real bandit leader decided to attack the village with you know all their defenses now moved off i still don't know why you wouldn't keep some some samurai around honestly but you know we probably weren't enough spares there or something hindsight hindsight 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now we're basically, basically our now, hometown. yeah Hiro hiroki's now basically going backwards through our hometown from the earlier level uh as it's burning down, and his only point, his only goal at this point, is basically to find Aiko and uh, hope, hope, hopefully find her alive. I think he's given up on trying to defend the village at this point. I mean, just look around you. There isn't much to defend <laughs> left, is there? I just, you know, kind of uh, surprised how quickly these bandits were able to do all of this because if you look around, you know, there are a lot of people like hanging from poles uh, and stuff like that. So. They've probably been here for a while already, haven't they? Pretty much since you left the village. Yeah. All of chapter two. Hmm. Um, there are numerous uh, multiple paths you could take as well. Uh, nothing major, but uh, like in that instance, you could have gone down below and taken out the 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 bridge uh, and taken out both of those guys at the same time. But due to the animations uh, that requires of it, it's actually slower uh, for speed runs. But sometimes you have those options to just like skip uh, whole sections. Now you mentioned the uh, the guard canceling. Uh, do you want to talk more about that? Uh, sure. That like you can't see me do that sometimes with some of my attacks. I basically cancel out the recovery of a hit by quickly tapping the block button, and um, you know it does exactly what you would expect it would do. It uh, skips all my recovery frames so I can immediately, just like that, immediately go into attacking again and um, since the game kind of expects you to or Hiroki to go back a step after a finished combo it just allows me to keep in my enemy's face and you know ruthlessly murder them and that obviously makes it go a little bit faster and that is what actually allows you to stun lock um, the boss of the second chapter there if you saw me do that yeah, there's there's not like any effect that you'd be able to see that you've done it correctly outside mm -hmm. of the fact that you, you haven't stepped backwards. And now we've got the bow because we defeated the archer who had the bow. Yep. Like there are like three ranged weapons uh, that you can pick up over the course of the game. One is the kunai, which are very fast but deal basically no damage. Then we have the bow, which is like the middle ground. And later on we will also pick up like a cannon, which deals the most damage but is mostly useless because it is so slow to use uh, that it's mostly not worth the investment. And in this area right here, you're seeing... Um fire arrows rain down upon us um you're supposed to hide behind you know the tree and the fallen debris however the fire arrows are in a 3d uh space 
So what ends up happening is there's some times where they might actually still hit you even though you are technically behind the, the, the debris. So it's it's very risky, especially if you're playing the like Kensei mode. It's just an yeah. RNG like run killer. Yeah, it's okay. Can be very finicky to properly dodge these. Acting more ninja like by just, you know, skipping those, those two guys. But this camera angle is tough to see the, the, the spacing. Yeah, I mean, it's very cinematic, but yes, uh, fighting on that plane with that camera angle is just. Uh, don't like it. Now, this is our first time fighting the horses, um, which you can dodge roll through or you can just stand and guard. Um, mm. HMO's skilled enough to be able to dodge properly through these, but uh, it is a very tight window for you to dodge, and you have to watch out for your stamina as well. And there's just one that's like off screen. All right, made it. always tends to hit me in Kensei mode. <laughs> yeah, that one is a little bit funny because it's like right at the edge of the screen and you kind of tend to forget about it because normally when you go to these screens with the horse riders, it's only like three strikes that you have to dodge and then that fourth one just comes out of nowhere and hits you and you die. And then you're sad because you go back to the checkpoint. It's especially bad when you're playing Kensei mode because, because of, yeah. you, know, you basically end up just saying, I'm just going to guard the hit. That's all. I'm just going <laughs> to... Don't want to risk the, the dodge. We we have to wait for the enemy to get onto our our uh, onto our same axis, um, basically, so you can see that during that moment, that's where like mm -hmm. HMO is like trying to like bait him or give him enough room to come onto the ro to to the ring. That sidling I told you about also happens here. Like anytime he sidles, it's it's really weird with the <laughs> with the Fox PC Game Pass version. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is like this was a new enemy type, right? The spear guys. I mean, we've seen one spear guy, which was the boss of the second chapter, but we haven't fought them as a normal enemy yet. And every time the game basically introduces a new enemy type, that particular enemy has way more health than they normally do over the course of the run. So you kind of just gotta keep that in mind uh, when you face them. That it's probably always the best option uh, to execute them once you face a new enemy type, because it will be just quicker to do. Except for the the one set of enemies that that don't get stunned so that you execute yeah. them. Which is much, much later. I'm actually going out of my way here a little bit just to pick up a capacity upgrade for the bow and more importantly a health upgrade. It's only one health point that gets added to me but it just makes everything a little bit more safer. Because as you can yeah, imagine as we go on in the game the enemies do start uh, to deal more damage and that basically just allows me to survive a hit more here and there. That's part of what I was mentioning earlier where you have to play this balance when you're doing these speed runs on this game. Uh, how you know which which upgrades are are worth the extra time second loss? Oh, this is not good. Oh, you're out of stamina. Yep. Okay. I have to play it a little bit safely here because that, uh, you know, with a spear he has a lot of range and uh, I was basically one hit away from death and I didn't want to have to reload the checkpoint there, so I just opted to shoot them with my bow. Luckily, you regenerate health every time you, you decide to select the checkpoint. I mean, the checkpoint is just I always forget how big this village is. <laughs> it's a couple of screens for sure, yeah. Like we're at that point where I feel like this level started, but I forget that's the other yes. outer gate. Exactly. I mean, if you remember, this is actually a part where you ran through and the very first chapter because we are back at that point. So all these areas that we go through might look a little bit familiar to you because you actually saw them earlier in the game already. Yeah, we just we just passed the area of our first kill. We're just looking at the camera from an opposite angle. I've got the double stun here. Nice. Oh, that was a good one. 
sometimes they don't play nice like that, and the other one decides to attack you through the other guy. Let's check the opportunity to refill my health here. I think it's oh, but it's only one pip. But you, you definitely sometimes feel like, uh, mm -hmm. especially this, 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 these three here have like an awkward fighting angle. So you can see Ashmo trying to pull them onto the the bridge because it can really mess with your spacing. Especially when the guy with the pole decides to stab through the guy you're fighting. Yeah. I was just gonna say what the enemies can actually do is they can attack through their buddies. Oh, hello. Okay. This is much. exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> You just, it's so difficult to tell where, where your spacing and, and zoning is on that, like, mm -hmm. if they're on the axis or not. But yeah, enemies can attack you through other enemies, and there is very little you can do about that in that situation, so... Um, and you don't want to see it, so you just... Oh, alright. You decided to just work through me. I guess that's cool. Keep losing my train of thought because they kept interrupting me. <laughs> How dare they? Right? And this is another example where the enemies are the enemies don't cannot the enemies don't do any team attack basically. And uh, in this area they they can gather up pretty pretty uh, easily in off axis. You can see that one guy is trying to fight to get on the axis there. And then he's gonna sneak attack Ishma. Thank God he was in the middle of execution. <laughs> mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would have been a bad hit. Uh, yeah, like the execution it... lasted just long enough uh, for him to do his strike, so he didn't actually hit me once I was vulnerable again after that animation, because that can absolutely happen. And uh, it can ruin your day just a little bit. Basically, we're at the boss of stage two, which was those wonderful ga gaming moments of uh, you're supposed to die in this mm -hmm. boss fight. Uh, that's why it went by so fast. Uh, however, if you do end up defeating uh, the general at that point, you will get to receive a secret ending, which is technically, I guess, the fastest way to complete this game. Uh, yeah. But it's not, it's not one of the desired endings. Yeah, I mean, we have an extra category for that, the secret uh, ending category, which you actually run. Yes, yes, I was the first one to... <laughs> to, po to post one on it, and then uh, and then I think someone was nice enough to beat my record. <laughs> how dare them? Like, okay, well, yeah. We'll see how that goes. In but now we've started our highway to hell. Mm -hmm. um, these are basically like uh, what, 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 ghosts. It's not ghosts, but like uh, it's, it's like yeah, this is basically this, purgatory I forget what, I forget the term that we're in in a way. So yeah, something like that. It's, it's basically like corrupted like souls is what we're mm -hmm. fighting against right now. Oh. Luckily, luckily they actually we lost our head. So, you know, fashion is gone. Kept the clothes though, that's the important part. <laughs> that cloth does wonders against the sword. <laughs> uh, not so sure about that though, to be fair. So basically, we found out that, that last fight, with, the, with our last boss fight, that uh, Aiko has already died at the hands of the general. Mm -hmm. And so we're chasing after what we believe is to be Aiko, because at this point, Hiroki doesn't realize he's on the path to hell. Spoilers. Because, I mean, you know, we've died technically at the end of the third chapter in our fight against the general. So these enemies are not great. Like I don't like fighting them for a myriad of reasons, actually. Like they tend to have a lot of health. You have to use your uh, double heavy attacks uh, to kill them, which costs you a lot of stamina, as you saw there. And uh, they have like these delayed attacks that can just really catch you off guard, and they always will stun you, opening up, to, opening you up to even more attacks. And uh, things can go very quickly downhill if you let them. So we have to be very careful how do you progress yeah. through these areas. And now they also put on armor and become even tankier. Yeah, I think some like the later enemies as well will have like an auto guard like attack. Like they'll attack mm -hmm. through. They won't <clears throat> flinch when you hit them with that first hit. Yeah. So you have to actually time your attack right. 
Now, what we're doing here is we're, we're basically using the environment to take out the three or four enemies I think we have on this difficulty. So, it's much faster than actually fighting them. Whereas, the easier difficulties where the one hit kill, it's obviously faster to go and just yeah. take them out with core slashes. And these opportunities are sprinkled throughout all the levels where you can just go ahead and use the environment in order to get, a group, uh, get rid of a group of enemies. However, as Bonton said, most of the time it's not worth it because it takes even longer to do that. But, you know. Sometimes it's a good idea to actually go ahead and do it. So we have another armored guy. And you do see the spider sacks up there. Sometimes they do get in the way and can actually cause damage to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those aren't there for decoration. They actually are enemies in a way and they will hit you. They can kill you too, which is not something you want to see. But here we found another samurai who thinks that you're evil and wants to kill you, so you have to kill him. Good use of his uh, spacing and control there by Ishma to do the with punishing light, light, heavy combo string. So again, these guys tank. You can see how he's basically not just tanking the hits. Like there's no flinching it involved. Mm -hmm. but he's trying to swing his sword. So like if you do the wrong combo, there was a faster combo we had that was able to allow us to yeah. stun. I don't think we we earned it at this point. Uh, I actually did pick up pick it up in chapter three. You do the light over combination. The problem is with one of the recent patches, they got rid of the stun component of that combo, which makes it basically useless now. It was really really powerful, so I can yeah. understand why they would want to want to nerf it. But it just definitely, <laughs> it felt like they it's, probably should have like slowed it down more than actually removed the stun component of it. Yeah, it's, it's like one of the things where it was way too powerful the way it was initially, but now they've just basically nerfed it to the ground because there is no purpose that combo is serving anymore now. It was a big uh, boss lock though. Mm -hmm. Basically, just spam that that one string against the bosses, and with your uh, guard canceling to go ahead and like make it so just they they had no no fight. Yeah, we'll probably see that again in chapter six still, but uh, yeah, normally we would use that combo like basically all over the place to quickly stun lock enemies and deal damage to them, then just outright kill them or execute them, depending on what we need to do. But now we just have to go back to the first stun combo that he had access to, which is a lot slower. And there's the example of him, uh, unfortunately, getting hit while trying to do the stun combo with the enemy here. And that little, like, white bar you see on the edges sometimes is basically the preventive wall that's stopping him from progressing uh, in an area where he's not allowed to progress until he kills everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going out of my way a little bit in this screen to pick up another stamina upgrade just to make the next boss fight a little bit safer. You can opt to not pick this up because you know it only loses like five seconds or so. It's not a huge time loss, but yeah. Sometimes you just want a little bit of safety. Also, I forgot right here. what I said previously in having to execute it when the game introduces new enemy types because they have a lot of health. Up to to fight this guy normally for whatever reason. Yeah, that was our first, um, uh, well, I forget what the weapon's called, but it's basically a gun. Uh, Yotsuzu. Cannon, yeah. It's basically a cannon that, uh, cannon type enemy who can shoot through all his teammates. And what's happened here is we found all of our old fr samurai friends who got executed earlier. Um, decide to blame everything that happened to them on Hiroki, and Hiroki has to defend himself against these souls. On Kensei mode, this, this battle was really annoying sometimes. Yeah. I definitely got no, overwhelmed there you know, pretty regularly it. still, because having to fight like seven enemies at once, uh, it can be a lot. With the RNG of like... Uh, mm -hmm. Them walking around behind you, deciding to swipe you from behind, um, and then having to die and respawn and do the cutscene all over again.
I think we have a, a little bit of time if you have any uh, shout-outs, donations, or incentives you want to give off. That is perfect, because we do have an upcoming incentive for the run right after this, actually. Rumu Any% percent, uh, where we need $100 total. We only have 24 so far uh, for Laundry Hamper Therapy. And apparently the Laundry Hamper is having the absolute worst time of any of the appliances in the house, so... If you want to see some love for the laundry hamper, you, we got to meet this incentive. And again, we only have until the end of this run, so please do get those donations in for that. I mean, good thing that we still have about an hour, not quite or so left in this one, so you have enough time to get that incentive met, I suppose. Because I've never heard of that, and I absolutely want to see it. Because people, you know, we are not only here to speedrun games and watch some lovelies, uh, we are also raising money for a very good cause. And, uh, what is that actually? What, have you not done your studying for your hosting session later? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I still have a couple hours left to do that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, we are raising money for Codwell children. Right? Uh, and in case you are wondering what they do, they are providing practical and emotional support for disabled children as well as their families across the United Kingdom. So, you know, if you do choose to support this cause, they will provide services and equipment to children who need them, including powered wheelchairs, therapy tricycles, and car seats as well as sports equipment for talented disabled athletes. And they've also started their own brand new first of its kind in-house autism service from Codwell International Children's Center in Staffordshire, UK. So you should go visit their website. Uh, it's codwellchildren.org to learn more about their amazing programs. So people go ahead, do that, check that out, and then come back and donate. Because you want to help that cause and you want to see that incentive being met. Easy as that. $76 to go. Only 76, huh? I mean, we can do that until the end of this run, right? Pretty sure. I mean, I would damn well hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Because I want to see that happen. Oh, yeah, we're coming up on the um, stage four boss, right? Mm, yeah, slowly but surely, yes. More mobs. Two, two, two more screens. The environments blend so well between the stages. Sometimes I always forget how, 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 many, <laughs> how many screens you have to go. Uh, and another comment about that silo animation, it also applies to pushing things over. <laughs> that one bug. Oh, really? Sorry. Yeah, it was the first. Yeah, it was. Uh, I played the first time I played through this game was through the PC Game Pass. That's why I was like, man, this is a really long animation. Why are they making me <laughs> struggle so much for this? <laughs> and then I play, I see people doing speedruns. I'm like, wait, how are you guys doing? <laughs> That's so fast. Yeah. yeah, it makes you really wonder what happened with that version of the game, right? I, I, yeah, I'm also wondering like what you know if they ever patched fixed it. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna I have to go back and try it after your run today. Because I'm playing on PlayStation Five and it works good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Chapter Four boss coming up. Uh, this can be a little bit of a run killer for sure. That is why I picked up that extra stamina upgrade. It's so probably the biggest, let's see how the that demon goes. Far, right? mm -hmm. Well, here we go. Well, it's an actual. So Aiko is now a wraith, basically. Um, we found Aiko, but she's all angry that we weren't there to protect her. Um, and we're just hopefully able to avoid all these attacks safely and punish her um, with the with the heavy attacks here. Ooh, close one there. You might think that Aishma is actually uh, being very extra conservative with his spacing, but those hitboxes are actually very large. I are not linked directly to the length that's showing up with the, uh, with the, with the weapons themselves. Yeah, you know, like once I was playing on Kensei and she just clipped my toenails a little bit and killed me. And I had to do the fight all over again. Ah, she always catches me with that. Oh, just, oh wrong way. There you go, you have no time 
<laughs> oh no, I thought you were gonna win there. <laughs> That's what I thought too. Yeah. I saw you trying to throw a kunai. <laughs> <laughs> but I was out. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Alright, at least we got it without a doubt. That is the only thing that really matters here. So there was a because dialogue as I can prompt imagine there. having to do that fight all over again loses you a lot of time. Yeah. There was a dialogue prompt there you may have saw about selecting your path. Um, at mm -hmm. this point, it doesn't seem it doesn't actually have any merit um, to any yeah. like game changing decisions. But the final time we're, we're prompted that will change the ending of the game. Basically, like, are you sure? Are you really sure? Is that your final answer? Okay. And what we're doing here is that Ishma's doing these little slide puzzles, um, which I presume he has some sort of notepad document to help him out yes, with, like, a left I have. motion. Um, basically, we have to line up the fact, cards. Like, leading up to this marathon, I hadn't played this game in a while, so I had to pick up my notes again and see what I was actually doing. And for the life of me, I couldn't get these uh, sliding puzzles right for whatever reason. And then I noticed I was actually pressing the buttons uh, in reverse. Instead of right, I was pushing left. And I was like, what the hell, buddy? What are you doing here? I forgot that you wrote the notes in terms of the circle <laughs> goes to the right, not push right. right? No, push I, I ac actually wrote it down in a way where I have to push it, but my mind was just crossing it over for some reason. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, what went wrong there? But yeah, like I said, if you actually press right, it moves the dial to the left and vice versa. So it can be a little bit off putting if you do it the first time around. Especially if you're coming back after a little bit of a break. Mm, yeah. Now, most of the enemies we're going to be fighting are actual ghosts and spirits of the enemies we've already killed. I don't think we've we've run into any new enemies yet uh, in this ghost uh, form, but not it yet. will be soon. Yeah, like in the next screen, I think. No, not this one, the one after. Oh shit! See, that's, yeah, that, was an, <laughs> that was an example right there of a uh, of we. You know, he, he looked like he was on the axis, but he actually wasn't fully on the axis. And mm -hmm. He was still able to evade my sword sledge there. In some cases, he would have been able to clip him before he fully got onto the axis there, but now we have to go back a whole fight. Yeah, that is basically can... where a lot of the time loss basically comes in in this one. Like, if you just die once, depending on which screen it was, it just can send you back minutes, and uh, it's very, very uh, hard to make up that time. It's always the problematic fights that seem to make send you yeah. back the furthest, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. He's like, now he's making sure he's on the axis before he starts to strain. Mm -hmm. But it's just like this dilemma, you want obviously to go as fast as you can, but if you kind of go too fast and not, you know, have the enemies on the right axis or bait out attacks and stuff like that, it can cost you like minutes if you die. So yeah, you, yeah, I mean, sometimes you might want to go a little bit slower just to make sure that absolutely does not happen, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the AI manipulation hasn't really been figured out fully yet to, to know exactly what positions we have to be in on what frame. To... This is our first new enemy as it goes from. He basically is the bandit from earlier, only now he can fire his sword, his spirit swords at us. Yep. So it's, it's a battle of trying to get to him before he decides to shoot off his, his spirit sword. Well, it's not an unblockable, it's, it, it's annoying to block. I actually forgot that he survives then. Yeah, I was going to say, where you kill him. Is, uh, another thing in particular with that enemy is when they uh, shoot their swords, so to speak. You can block them from the front, but if they do that from the back, you cannot block that attack, which is like really dangerous if they are in a group of enemies. Yeah, I believe it's stage uh, stage two, where you end up picking the, up the ability to block from behind. However, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like yeah. like, like Ashman just said, like for the for that specific attack, you cannot block it from behind. I'm assuming it's because it thinks it's a projectile and not a probably actual, yeah like, physical attacker. And now comes the most annoying enemy in the whole game. What if the ghost yeah, you have to basically rush her down and she has a shield um, and you're trying to just like get that stun hit on her before she to break her to break her shield before she decides to uh, float away and make you have to face multiple people. 
she'll she'll basically indefinitely spawn enemies. Um, so you have mm. to get her knocked out as fast as possible. And that obviously can lose you a lot of time. Yeah, it turns what could be a one-person battle to a seventeen-person battle. <laughs> yeah. There's another example here where like the enemies are animating onto the onto the fighting plane, but sometimes they they haven't gotten their hurt boxes yet. Yeah, you can kind of see that once an enemy like um, gets onto the combat plane, they might just stand there for a second. But once they actually take their weapon and put it up, you know, like in a guarding position, then you know you can actually go ahead and hit them. Yeah, and the nice thing about that puzzle you just saw Ishma do was that it takes so long for the door to open that we're able to just run over and grab a stamina upgrade before. Oh, got hit from behind. That might cost us the fight. Yep. Yep. Yep, she's on. There we go. That was unfortunate. That is exactly what we are worth saying just She now. regenerates her shield, right? Like, so you have to hit her two more times. Uh, I think um, so, yeah. So ideally what h wants to do here is is not, is not kill the final guy near her, so that way she has less, uh, he has less space to catch up on her. She's about to come down. There we go. Right. Good job. Kind of salvaged it. But yeah, that can just be really annoying if they keep t uh, if they just keep um, summoning new goons to fight. Especially also if they have a uh, um, if you're low on stamina from the fights and you're trying mm -hmm. to knock out the shield, you know, you have to balance between the two of them. Yeah, it's like very dangerous. It's it's why you want to finish off the enemies near her. <laughs> but then you just have to hope that the AI decides to want to chase you towards her. Here's another one of those awkward camera angles where you're going like towards and away from the camera with your left to right motion, so it makes spacing and uh, a little difficult. And and being able to, and you see it so far back, it's difficult to tell like how far away the enemy is. Because it's, again, even though you're seeing like uh, Hiroki move into the foreground and background, like it's still just pressed left to right. Also, apparently, guns work on ghosts. <laughs> I mean, if swords do, why not guns, right? Yeah. <laughs> just throw the sword. Yeah, you're out of bullets. <laughs> yeah. That would actually be a good option if you could do that's, that for sure. That's what you should pick up from the from that one bandit ghost. <laughs> is the, the ability to throw your sword. Oh, that would be so good. Sadly, we can't do that. So this whole house is basically enough. a cube-based puzzle. Um, there'd be times where we basically are able to sneak through a door through the 3D 3D space to try to save a fraction of a second. But, um, I think this was a new enemy for us. Yes. The Ronins. They're basically the toughest enemies in the game, I want to say. Because they have a lot of health and they can teleport around you. And they can also leave behind an after image. And if you attack that after image instead of them, you immediately lose all of your stamina. Which is basically a death sentence. You have to be very careful whenever you engage them. Okay, now we're at another Q puzzle here. It's not really a puzzle, it's probably not the right word to say, but it's basically an animation. Um, and you can die by falling into it. And mm -hmm. basically we're just trying to hit the checkpoint just in case something bad were to happen in the upcoming fights. So you could save five seconds by just running to the right instead of the left mm -hmm. there. But uh, HMO wants to play it safe for the sake of your viewership. <laughs> and your donations. Right. Don't forget about your donations, guys. I think we also have Speaking some awesome prizes that you can actually win if you donate money. So, Tally, how about telling us a little bit about those? All right, I was just going to mention that, actually. I was like, the nice. next time he's calling on me, I'm going to be like, well, if that incentive <laughs> isn't enough, we also have prizes. Because we do have them. Uh, we have a bunch of them, Perfect. actually, because uh, we are, we're supported by Team 17 for Indie Thon Fellow Foley. So, 
they sent us a bunch of different games and that there's a bunch of different ca uh, packs of games that you can win by simply donating. So starting from just $5, you can get the cute friends pack or you can go all the way up to a $25 donation for the grand prize, which has a bunch of games in it. So I do recommend going to that donation page and check them all out because, you know, we have the Indiethon pack, the Speedrun starter pack, Pixel Swords pack. There's a lot of good stuff in here, so... Again, we have incentives and prizes, and you support an amazing cause. What more could you want, really? You know, I was trying to make a joke here, but I actually can't think of anything, so uh, go ahead and donate, I suppose. Now, coming up is actually a mid boss of this chapter. You might recognize him. It is the boss from chapter two, once again, up to his usual shenanigans. So, let's see if I can actually redeem myself during that fight. Because the last one didn't quite go as planned, now, did it? <laughs> I think we also were supposed to get like a, one of the other popular string attacks from beating him, right? Yeah. For now, like I don't want to push him all the way to the end of a platform because he did bug out against me last time I did that. So I just wanted to make sure I don't push him all the way to the right just yet. I mean, other than that, it's basically the same exact fight. I mean, you're gonna fight him to get yeah. health, and then he fight. He has enemies to spawn in. As he gets a nice little bit. I'm just trying to rush him down to the edge before he... There we go. There we go. Good job, Ishma. Nice. As you see, that is basically the power of the block cancel that we talked about earlier, because every time I was at the end of my combo, I quickly press the block button, basically resetting my animation so I can immediately start another combo again and basically stun lock him to death, more or less. Now, you do see him, like, dodge one of my attacks, uh, like, in the middle of the combo string every time, but your further attacks in the combo once again catch him, basically resetting the whole thing if you do the block cancel. It's a little bit finicky uh, to get a hang of because it does have a certain rhythm to it that you just have to get used to, but once you get it down, this is pretty consistent to do, actually. Yeah, I believe the missed attack is just because they have the, the boss uh, program to turn mm -hmm. off his hair pocket for one hit. I believe we're going to be coming up and seeing the horse riders next. Mm -hmm. so it's yep. only the, only, the, two, the second of two instances to run into them. Yep. Um, but you, you can actually you can actually kill the the horse riders themselves. Like you don't have to run through them. But you know this is a speed running event, so we're just going to run. Through them. <laughs> don't have to kill every enemy, right? Yeah. There's enough like death weird. already in this run. It's like you learned that in speed running 101, right? Like you, <laughs> the first time you, you realize, like, oh, I don't have to clear every single screen and boss enemy. Nope, you don't. And this screen can be an annoying fight because it spawns a banshee um, mm. who, like, sometimes will spawn off screen and if you're not fast enough. No, oh, there she yeah, comes. Yeah, she's just, yeah, there she comes. So you're unable to really to get a unless she can do it. Oh god, actually. Oh, got there him. we go. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> as you can, nice. as you can assume, like not making that kill um, as fast as possible would obviously delay our time even further. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely a good one to get because she just spawns so far off camera. It's it's difficult with the stamina. I noticed you were using your heavy, heavy attack, right? Which does a lot of stamina drain. Yep. Okay, let's hope we don't die here now. Okay, is this a little the... bit of a puzzle? Go, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, so basically what you're supposed to do is cut the boat three and then activate, you know, the statue where the water comes out. But obviously you have just enough time to first activate the statue to make the water rush out and then cut the boat loose. However, if you're just a little bit too slow, you will actually drown down here. So uh, this is always a little bit of a risky strat to do, but obviously it saves a little bit of time. So, you know, pick your poison. Yeah, and since you run into the statue first, a lot of times people will start filling up the water without realizing they can go on. They have, they have to cut the rope. Um, because if you cut the rope, the, the boat doesn't float all the way to the top. Yep. 
think th this screen's also a, another annoying one just because of the way that the the left right motion is. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I mean, you can just see that teleportation that those Ronins have as well that we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah, it's not only uh, is the um, the screen curving around here making it really difficult to see, but it's also going upwards, so you can't actually hit enemies with range attacks if you were trying to shoot them because you know Hiroki is a little bit dumb, I want to say. He can only ever shoot in a straight line if you use your ranged options. He cannot aim up or down, so you're really just locked in what you have to do here. Or what you can do here, yeah. rather. It's not parallel to the ground, basically. Mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't aim towards towards the direction of the ground, so what ends up happening is he just shoots the dirt in front of him or just yeah. completely over top of his enemy's heads. <laughs> exactly. It's one or the other. It's not. It's never towards the enemy at that point. <laughs> um, however, really the, one, the one benefit with it is that like the, the sword shooting ghosts uh, are also afflicted with the same exact um, issues. So they end up like shooting swords over top of your head. Yep. Um, half the time, which is very nice, uh, because then you don't have to worry about guarding or dodging them. Absolutely. Going out of my way a little bit to pick up that checkpoint, just you know, to be absolutely safe here. I think you're just picking it up from your Kensei runs. <laughs> I think I actually don't pick it up on Kensei anymore, if it's interestingly enough. Uh, eventually we're going to get to that point on Kensei where it's going to be like a no checkpoint, no death runs. Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> Be like a 15 minute run. <laughs> nah, nah. I think my lowest that I completed can say mode on was like three or four deaths, I want to say, but I'm not exactly sure anymore. I would have to go ahead and rewatch that run. It's a slower but speed yeah. than the world record for like uh, the easiest difficulty, I believe, which is. Mm -hmm. The annoying thing about Kensei is that Kensei uses the medium difficulty. Uh, enemy placement stuff too, so it's uh, easy mode. You fight less enemies, even though you have to, you know, hit them hit more. Though on easy mode, I think like for the first half of the game, all the enemies die in one hit anyway. So. <laughs> Oof, that was a good block string. I would have oh, gotten nice. there. Yeah, that is exactly. Oh, there we go. That's what can just sometimes happens, you know, enemies already readying attacks while you are still locked into an animation. And as I said before, you can't block these flying swords from behind. Uh, so the Bezzy just took a free hit on me. Yeah, and the, the benefit bastard. between each of the three projectile weapons, I don't know if he talked about them, but uh, he did mention that the kunai is the fastest one. The bow and arrow is like a medium animation startup. Um, it does a lot of damage. And then you have the, uh, the the cannon fire, which is basically can go and pierce through enemies. However, mm -hmm. again, like they have, it doesn't follow the 2D plane or the, the, the fighting axis. It follows whatever's directly in front of Hiroki. And if like the enemy is not standing right behind the enemy in front of them, then it basically whiffs completely. Nice block. Ishma really like doing well on these block strings. <laughs> I'm just picturing myself just dying to all of it. <laughs> like playing Kensei, I'm like I don't have time for this. Just like hit him with an up up light. <laughs> Can't be very finicky here. Yeah. I think the up light's the fastest attack option Rookie has. So on uh, the down the down actually. Down one, okay. But both of them have like a shorter range and distance mm -hmm. than the, than the standard neutral one. Um, so that's that's the risk you play. Like, am I just within the space? <laughs> yeah, you have to be really up in their face uh, to make that. So if you're just a little bit off, well, you don't have the range, so you're probably gonna die. And now we found um, the next person in our in our way, uh, the old soul of Sandro, mm -hmm. our right. old master, who was upset. He looks that a little bit different died. though. Yeah. Definitely bigger. He's basically now the god Fujin. Which, uh, you know, the, the fight can, can basically be played out in a very uh, deterministic way um, in most cases. Uh, it's just a matter of finding those moments when you're supposed to, you know, cancel oh, with a roll or to get to his opposite side. But you have to also watch out because he can push you off the ledge and Aishma's low on stamina here. Nice dodge on that one. 
Yeah, that, that's that, that shoulder tackle would knock him off the edge. Oh, there. He has to be very careful because he can die instantly. Again, because we're on hard, he has like the most health of the entire game. Oop. There's that, that's what happens if you're not um, close enough to the edge, thankfully. Uh, oh, oh, you're no, okay. No. Yeah. Oh. That one catches a lot of people on the first Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was, uh, <laughs> that was a thing. <laughs> you did it, though. <laughs> Once again, you know, we did it without a death, so that's good, but uh, yeah, that fight can be a thing. Like, most of it is actually kind of scripted, I want to say, because if you uh, do a certain motion or go through a certain motion during the fight, the enemy will generally respawn in kind. Like, he will always do the same combos himself, but it can be a little bit finicky the longer the fight goes on, because it can't just go all the rails there. So you kind of want to do go through it as quickly as possible, but, you know. Doesn't always happen, so you have to be really on your toes there and you know see what he does and react accordingly. Dude, what? Yeah, and since Kensei is like one hit, like there's not even a health bar to bother with. <laughs> <laughs> so like all the health, all the health upgrades are not there at all, and they didn't replace them with like more stamina upgrades, which would have been nice, but mm -hmm. understandable. <laughs> it's just really funny when I played Kenzo for the first time. I didn't even see the health bar because it's literally not there. <laughs> like really sets the tone for the whole difficulty setting. This this part, I think it's this 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 one screen has been the death of me and Kensei, just because of uh, the way that these enemies group up and their AI works together. It even even on even in this difficulty, it, it can drain a lot. Um, as you can mm -hmm. see, we're no longer getting full health for doing executions, so that doesn't help matters. Sometimes you get these uh, the bandits that that will throw their uh, swords from like across the screen as they spawn in. That's why you saw Ishman go go right up on him. I think it's the next screen as well. Is... Yep, this is like a long string of battles because there are a lot of enemies here and you have no checkpoint in between. So dying here can set you back quite a ways. And you can see that one that one guy. Uh, it's like taunting Ishmo with like, "Hey, I'm on the axe." No, I'm not. <laughs> I think, he, I think he's close enough, then he catches you, then his partner catches you, uh, screaming. Yeah, they could definitely play some mind games with you here. You're just not allowed to fall for them, huh? You're right, right pushed there, him off yeah, the, uh, push him off the axis. Yeah, you were lucky to get the, the, uh, off-axis hit, but unfortunately that also knocked him backwards. Um, mm. he was facing towards the camera, so he ended up going off-axis. Oh, and I hit the double. Oh, he hit the shadow in. Yeah. Yep. Right. I think he regen I, I, I think he regenerates health during that point. Might be. I've actually never tested it and see if that is correct though. I mean, it's not too much of a difference. You just have to stun him anyways. So. Yeah, fair. <laughs> or in Kensei, you just have to hit him once. But that's also the point where it, this run, you know, we are in the second to last chapter of the game, but it can start to be a little bit draining now in the speedrun because we've been at it for like an hour uh, already at this point, and you just have to be constantly aware of which enemies you are facing, which combos you're using to dispatch of them, uh, where your ammo pickups and upgrades and stuff like that are, so it's a lot of just to keep mentally track of. And couple of that with, you know, being able to die in like two hits or so, and it's a really fun game to speed on, a fun game to play in my opinion, but it's also very stressful in a way. Yeah, like are, I, I You're not allowed to, to do a lot of mistakes stressful. here. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, saying, I tend to think that hell is pretty stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Also, by the way, uh, since chapter 4, we are now officially in Yomi, so, you know, we are making our trek through Yomi at the moment, not even to Yomi. That has been chapter 1 through 4, so to speak. 
Just you know to keep with the title of the game here. Also, everybody, notice the bee in the background. Let's see if everybody here can spot the bee. Do you see the bee up there? It's a nice bee, right? The best bee. If you have Honestly, no idea what the before. hell I'm talking about, um, like it was during a previous <laughs> marathon run, and uh, obviously I was referencing the uh, dragon in the background there. And somebody said that was a bee for some reason. To this day, I, I don't know it. why. But uh, apparently that's a bee. It's a very big dragon-shaped bee, but it is a bee. So that is what another, it is. This hot area, this screen is also another area where you have to watch out for the flaming arrows. Because mm -hmm. again, even though oh, yeah, right. Even though you're uh, hiding behind giant columns, uh, again, the arrows are in a 3D space, so sometimes they do go through the columns, or at the angle that they're being fired at, they end up, like, sneaking a side hit on you. Mm -hmm. so you have to be careful with that. Uh, luckily, Ashman was make able to make it through without an issue, though. Another thing is these columns, you saw the uh, kanji on them light up or power down or whatever you want to call it. And if they run out of energy, so to speak, that will actually fall back down, basically destroying your cover. So you are not allowed to, you know, stick, stick there for too long and, uh, you know, get rid of these uh, shots that are being fired at you constantly. So you have to be on your toes, like constantly. Another example of the uh, upward climb being disadvantageous to... Uh... Uh, projectile weapons here, so we have to go hand to hand combat. Ooh, she's like sadly mm. off axis. Yep, I'm not gonna you make tried. that. You tried, you tried, you tried. That's the important part. <laughs> And trying to keep her, uh, keep close to her so he can take her out as soon as she spawns downwards. So there's the bee! Say hello to the bee, everybody! <laughs> like I said, it's a very big bee. Also very scaly. Also, this is probably the worst spot to die in because you had so much stuff before this. So I'm gonna be a very sad gamer. This is happening, Watch and out. it's happening because that guy decided to shoot another sword at me. And then I had to block it, or I would have died because I was low on health. But then I didn't get to kill the lady ghost. And that is yeah. just how the cuckoo crumbles sometimes. And there unfortunately, since since she doesn't spawn him, uh, killing her doesn't despawn him. Yep. So yeah, we couldn't we couldn't save time by uh, by killing her first. All right, but we made it to the next I, checkpoint. That is good. I think I'm noticing your um, your your guard cancels better. Like, I, I'm able to see like the the points where like he would step back. And, um, it's definitely helping out. It's definitely a big skill to to learn if you wanted to pick up this game, which isn't even a year old, right? Uh, no, it came old. out in May this year. Actually, so it's about half a year old at this point. God for execution animation. <laughs> yep. 
Otherwise, that would have been a juicy hit. Um, another thing this game actually features is uh, it has different endings. I mean, we touched upon that earlier when we told you about the secret ending that could happen in Chapter 3. But even if you see the game through to its conclusion, you have the option between three different endings, the Love, Duty, and the Vengeance ending. And even though it is not a donation incentive this time around, um, you guys will actually be able to vote in just a minute which of the endings you actually want to see at the end of the run once I have completed the next set of puzzles. So, Tally, if you want to go ahead and activate that, uh, once I pass that big poll you can already see in the background there, and then you guys can go ahead and vote which of the endings you want to see. I actually got a bit of a head start too, it's already up, but it's okay, I will keep track right, of which right. one wins by the time uh, no they have a winner selected. You have five minutes to vote, so get the votes in right now. So as you already saw at the ends of chapter 4 and 5, there were some choices that we were able to make. However, they are superfluous, they only change the corresponding cutscene just a little bit and give you a bit of uh, different dialogue, obviously. However, the choice that you make at the end of chapter 6, which is this chapter, actually uh, sets in which ending you're gonna see at the end of the run. So, uh, you know, once we beat the next boss, uh, we are locked into our ending. So go ahead and vote. And let's see what you guys want to see. Will we make our way through the later half of chapter 6 here, which is also probably the hardest part of it. Or maybe not, but eh, you get the idea. Just like the other stages, there's some annoying screens. Yeah. Yeah, double, double cannons. Uh, definitely definitely don't help anything. Yep. Especially when, they're, when there's no team killing. And uh, they lock you in between them, so you can't actually evade it properly. It's always a fun time. It's not, I'm lying. <laughs> that was fun. What are you talking about? <laughs> for you, maybe, if you get to watch it, but not for me. That doesn't sound like world record talk, Hishma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll see about that. Oh, he outputs you. Not the second time, though. Yeah, I'm just taking my time a little bit with these enemies to make absolutely sure that they are properly on the uh, plane so I can actually go ahead and attack them. Because they can just murder you very quickly. If they want to. That wasn't already obvious. Especially, yeah, if the gun guy in the background decides to join in as well. Oof. Just made it through. Because as you can see, these screens just tend to get longer and longer with more and more enemies on them. And if you die to the last enemy and you have to do this whole section again, that is just pain. Especially in this difficulty setting because everything takes so long to get through. Yeah, we're about three quarters through the poll as well. So if you haven't uh, chosen an ending that you would prefer, then feel free to... Yep. Poll is still up. So we get those voices heard. It's the best kind of poll, you know? You don't even have to put money into this incentive. <laughs> not that not incentivizing would be a bad thing. <laughs> ah. Ooh, okay. Nice dodge on, the, on that gunfire. Those guns Interesting that the melee guy actually dodged behind the cannon guy. That is rare. I mean, in all in all honesty, I would be I would be jumping behind the guy with the cannon as well. <laughs> I think there's like one guy who spawns at the very end here, like to the yeah. Uh, so I hate that guy. He trails behind so often for so long, and you're just wondering, come on, dude, hurry it up! I want to get this over with. Yeah, because you're on the far right side of the screen, you're not not not, not within his trigger zone, you know. Mm. Speaking of other than the trigger zone, I'm trying to not activate the cannon guy here. I mean, he is there on the right chilling. Yeah, 
dude. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, luckily you're not within his uh, trigger zone yet. Uh, awareness. That's definitely... I think this is a little bit safe here. I mean, yeah, for obvious reasons. Like, yeah, you're like three frames away from getting shot in the gut. <laughs> Oh, this is not good. Oof, this is obviously not good. Oh, uh, no, he's lo loading up a second shot. Mm -hmm. It's already loaded. Oh, good dodge. Okay, we got the health back. That's the important part. <laughs> that was scary. Oh, no. Uh, run saved. Mm -hmm. Watch for how long, because here comes the next one. Luckily, you're able to get up on him at the start. His defense is four down. And as we're meeting the final boss of hell, um, you can see that you know the the world's just not holding together too well. Okay, uh, one more area to go through. I always forget about this one for some reason. I don't know. That happens a lot with me in this game when I'm doing speedruns. I'm like, there's another area? Oh my god, I thought we were there. <laughs> nope. Just keeps on going. Like the chapter the the chapter four I go fight, um, I always think it happens before you hit the tower. Like, oh wait, that's what we gotta do the tower. Oh yeah, that's so we're No no that that chapter just keeps going on for a while, yeah. Oh, come on, buddy. Yeah, the different difficulties will change how many enemies you have um, that come out at this point. Like an easy, uh, an easy mode, like you only fight two guys instead of four. So that's why that's where a lot of the time save comes in as well. Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. the extra health, just the mob changes as well. Actually, you know what? Let's try this. Oh fuck, that was a bad idea. Why did I do that? Yeah, I, was gonna say, I, was like, I don't know if you have it primed, dude. <laughs> I did not. Oh, um, you, oh, God, that's so lucky. He missed his shot. He <laughs> thought it was right in front of his face. Holy hell. Some might say, you know, you know, it <laughs> wasn't luck the skill, but, you know, l luck is Ashima's greatest skill. <laughs> All right, let's close on that incentive because we are up to the boss fight. What's it going to be? It's going to be love. Love. All right, then. That's actually nice because it is the fastest option to select because it's the initial one. One second save. Nice. We found out that waiting for us at the end of hell was uh, Hiroki himself. As he fights his samurai dude. Right. And love it will be. So yeah, there, there you saw the power of the god cancel once again, because once again, at the end of every combo, I just quickly tapped the block button, canceling out my recovery frames of the combo, and I could just, you know, stand up in this phase repeatedly and stun locking him there, which makes that a pretty easy boss fight. However, I didn't have enough stamina to go through it the whole time, so what I had to do was back off a little bit and throw a kunai to stun him again to basically uh, restart the whole process. But well, we have gone through the uh, gone through hell, and mm -hmm. we basically are on the final stage now. Yeah. This is the last chapter of the game, so we have about ten more minutes in this run, and then we'll be done here. We have a few new enemies to introduce as well, even though we're on the final stage. And uh, the boss fight, the final boss fight, is not really the easiest of all boss fights. 
yes like he is definitely a final boss that deserves the name like oh my god he has cost me so many runs so um let's see how he behaves today shall we it's also the longest fight you get to have with him yep Technically, the first two fights you have, you, you, you're one and one basically, right? With, with yep. a single hit kills. <laughs> a lot of these. Areas actually have multiple path, like two two paths you can do to try to get the jump on some enemies. But um, is doing a good job at uh, picking off uh, certain save points to save time. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, he hit well, me luckily, right luckily we were just one, we were just one screen away, so it wasn't much of a time loss there. It hit me right as I came out of my inner vulnerability frames of the uh, execution there. And those spear guys don't really wait around for anything because they have a long distance of awareness. Ooh, nice interruption there. Right, now, yeah, these are... are the toughest enemies in the game. I forget if, if the old uh, up stun that we talked about getting nerfed uh, actually worked on them or not. Uh, it's been so long I can't actually remember. This one, I never even knew you could saddle through <laughs> until I saw you do it on the speed run. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you can you can fall down in that pit and you have to go through the, the whole basement, basically, but you can just save time by, by walking yeah. along the side. Though, to be fair, it saves like a second, so it's not that big of a time save, actually. It just looks like that, because if you go down into the basement, you have to climb this ladder back up and stuff like that. But since the shimming along the wall takes so long, it's barely a time save. Ooh, nice dodge there. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, since this guy is really well uh, armored, uh, it, he's uh, getting a little off axis there. Uh, okay, he's giving up. He's giving up. Hope. Okay, I'm just gonna do that to recover my stamina because things are a little bit jank right now. Okay, buddy, what's it gonna be? Nice, nice carry there. Uh. <laughs> what was that double parry? <laughs> what? Uh, I'll take it. I mean, I'm gonna take it too. I just confused what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen that before. Watch out for the arrows here that your uh, the archers are trying to take you out, and they actually, mm. as you can see, are burning your your protective layer. <laughs> Thankfully, the guy hadn't loaded it, and he took the full hit. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. Because apparently, the other guys are just too dumb to properly attack me. Good job, Asia. As, as you probably have noticed, those cannons do a lot of damage, so... Oof. Just like those spears. Oh, just out of range. Uh -oh. Die. Just die. Okay. <laughs> you throw all the arrows at him. Get the ice cream vendors. <laughs> oh, we still have another fight to go through still. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, this is this is this is not good. Yeah, you can probably get some health back though. There we go. Barely. Come on, dude. Nah, he doesn't get on the plane, does? Is he on the plane now? Okay, he's now. Yeah, he's on him now. Yeah. Uh, this is jank. What's it gonna be, buddy? Nice dodge. There we go. Good job, Ishma. It was more stressful than it any right to be. Checkpoint okay. finally. <laughs> <laughs> right, here is a little awkward because you have to you have to time your dodge rolls uh, to get underneath the arrow shot while I also mean, trying. At least finally we get to take our revenge against these archers that have been bugging us since chapter three, I think it was. Chapter three, yeah. So it's finally revenge time. The annoying part is that uh. 
um, as you saw in the first or the second guy, is that like, if you get too close to them, they kick you away and sometimes get a free hit. Mm -hmm. so that's why Ace has to really do, be precise with when he's dodging these arrows and the distance between them. That kick is like really OP. It is like one of the strongest moves in a way in the game because it deals damage, it stuns you for a long time, it opens you up for more attacks. It's miserable to get kicked in the face in this game. Like, I don't even know why, like, you know, you'll take multiple sword strikes to the face and survive it, but, you know, get it kicked? Yeah, no, that's a no-go. I remember having the misfortune of getting, of missing the dodge, so I got hit by the arrow, and then I got kicked, yeah. and then got shot in the face with another arrow immediately. <laughs> yep. As a three-hit combo, and I'm like, are you... <laughs> it can get out of control, like, really quickly. Oh, watch out for that pole guy. Uh, he's not, he's not letting you up. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's that kick, and there's the that, shot. There we go. Yeah. Fortunately, again, like, the checkpoint was right outside the door, though. Getting between those two is just a miserable time. Well, there we go again. Getting combo to death. Every every pip of health matters in this one. That's what I was referring to as well earlier with the when... Um, you have to sacrifice, like, going out of your way to get a health upgrade, sometimes. But now you and see why they are worth it. Oof. So tense. God damn it. Like, Hiroki's attack from behind, like, if his back is facing the enemy and you tell him to attack the guy towards his back, it is a very strong attack, but it's also very slow. So if you All right. if you didn't buffer your turnaround motion at the same time, mm. you're fine. So these were actually the last normal enemies in the game. The only thing that we have left is a bit of running around through the village and then the final boss. So we're only a couple of minutes away from the end, so, and since we probably will go under SM by quite a bit, uh, so for the organizers it might be a good idea to, you know, ping the next runner, so he can get ready. Now the, the reason why I chose this high of an estimate, we have an estimate of like 1 hour 50 minutes, is because as you saw, things can go wrong very quickly in this game. And uh, so we definitely need a little bit of leeway if things would go south just like repeatedly. Now luckily for us, it actually turned out pretty well so far. I mean, there were a couple of mistakes, a couple of deaths, but overall, I think it was a pretty good run so far. But we still have the final boss to get through, and he can be an absolute roadblock. Like, you can lose minutes on that guy. So, let's see how that fight goes in just a minute here. Yeah, it's not a sealed deal yet. Um, and you may have also noticed while running through the streets there that uh, if you pay attention on one corner, Ashma got hit by a by a mm -hmm. flare hit. Um, and sometimes that fire, you know, just comes out of nowhere. Like, it doesn't. Physically, you can't see it, but like it just ends up doing damage to you. Um, hence, why he's going to get some re refilled right here with his final checkpoint and try to load up all his ammo ready for the fight. Um, as we take on the final boss. All right. Ah, oh, it's gonna be fun. So basically, we're gonna have to. We're trying to go, try to bait him into his attack so we can parry. And then we get to uh, knock out this, knock him out to 100% health here. That's not the end of the fight, sadly. Uh, because now he uses his powers of Yomi to cause fire bursts and fire floors. Now we're trying to get him to 50% health here. Unfortunately, we missed that shot. That fire, will, that fire on the floor will cause damage to us while we stand in it. Nice parry by Ishma. Now we're going to spike two of them at the same time. So hopefully you're able to take one out before the other one gets noticed. Sad. H man ran out of stamina, unfortunately. Uh, cornered, no stamina. That's a death sentence. I saw you tried rolling to his other side, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, you weren't close enough to do it. Yeah. 
combo stream that he unfortunately does to take a lot of your stamina out. Yeah, that is what can happen to the final boss here. Hence why he definitely deserves to be the final boss in the game. Good parries by Ishma. Fortunately, the game lets you skip the cutscenes automatically. You've already viewed it. I saw Ishmael rolling to the far left there because he didn't want to get sandwiched between both enemies. It's like the boss is literally playing with each one. Yep. Oh, yeah. Back. Again, this is literally the run killer. It's the final boss. <laughs> the final boss of this fight can be, can be a world records run killer. For this exact reason. It's just, it's just a lot of gauntlet you have to go through. You do regenerate stamina while you're uh, moving, but like it's way slower than just standing still. So proper stamina management. Now we're on the final phase of this boss fight. <laughs> oh, so we were on the final phase of this boss fight. <laughs> they just had to bring it home there, but nope. <laughs> what a bastard. One can that one combo with the, uh, the guard canceling is really helpful there, especially if the enemy gets pinned between the two versions. Can't just hope that he backs away and no. doesn't kill you. No. no, he actually does. There we go. Uh, okay. Wow. So honorable of him. All right. Yeah, let's try this again. He can trap you with that floor. And as well. time. There. Sorry, that was a little bit out of the blue. <laughs> I didn't know if that shot would kill him or not. <laughs> so I totally forgot to uh, one check here, but oh, that fight is just so stressful. And in honor of his love, he is now uh, basically dying with the boss to go and be with his beloved um, in the afterlife for all eternity. Okay. Oh yeah, that is basically the ending that you guys chose. 
So let's just go ahead and watch that. Happily <sighs> reunited in the afterlife. Nice private little island in, in, in the clouds, huh? <laughs> Right? With everyone else's little private little iron island. <laughs> Sprinkle around them. It's like, let's build a bridge. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see there, like the final fight, there's just a lot that goes into it, you know, with having to parry him, having the uh, correct spacing for your attacks and to parry his attacks, watching your stamina, not getting cornered uh, when it's not supposed to happen, so you can actually go ahead and block the attacks. Uh, and it can very easily cost you minutes. Like, um, if I'm correct, this was a time of 1 hour, 36 minutes, 22 seconds. The current world record is around 3 minutes lower than that, and we actually went into the final boss fight on world record pace and yeah sadly you saw what happened there we lost a bunch of time so no world record uh, today so i guess we have to come back and do that once more huh i think it is faster than your current posted time on speedrun.com though it so is but i actually had a I faster know. time yesterday during practice of one hour 33 minutes and 45 seconds so around about two 30 and a half minutes off, faster yeah. yeah it was 30 seconds off so i was very confident that it could could we could get the world record today during this run. But once again, Kagero just came in and said, Nope, you're not getting it today. So we have to come back another time. Anyway, this is the end of the run. Ponton, do you have any shout outs to do? Um, you know, just everyone in the uh, Trek to Yomi Discord, uh, speedrunning Discord, yes. as well as everyone who, you know, helped make the game and, and all that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just uh you know it, it's been a, it is a fun game to play through mm -hmm. um especially uh it's it's also relatively short in that regard yeah. but like uh it's still uh pretty interesting combat mechanics it's nice to see it um so i you know just give a shout out to everyone uh who supports the game and enjoys running mm -hmm. it um and as well just a shout out to the samurai jack community because you know me <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely go ahead and give this uh, game a chance. It costs only like $20 or something like that. It is pretty cheap uh, to get. It's a very fun uh, run to do. It's a very fun game to play. It has a nice story and everything to it. If you just love, you know, similar games like me, because I speed on them a lot, um, go ahead and get this game. It is fantastic. Um, also, shout out to Matt for joining me once again on commentary. I met him first around doing the Samurai Jack speedrunning, where he basically taught me the run. Actually, so much that I was able to beat his world record time in Samurai Jack at one point. And right now on. he's joining me for commentary and check to me because he's also kind of running this game, which is always nice to see. Other than that, a uh, huge shout out to Indithon for having me once again. And um, I think I checked the schedules and it might actually be that I'm the only runner who has participated in all three Indithon events this year, which is actually a huge honor for me, though thank you so much for having me around so often. I uh, can't wait for next year and for more Indithons, so definitely go ahead and submit more games to those. So you'll probably see me again during one of these events. And um, I guess that is it from me as well, because you already shouted out the Tractor Yumi speedrun community and the Samurai Jack guys as well. So I guess all that we are left to say here is bye-bye. Uh, Good luck to all the rest of the runners. This event is still going strong. You know, we are still trying to raise a little bit more money out of that. We have some awesome prizes that you can donate for. So go ahead and do that. And um, I'm out of here. See you next time. Well, you're not out of here quite yet, because I think you gave the final boss a little bit too much credit. Clearly, you were just stalling to get more donations, right? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> and you're saving the world record for the people who follow you on Twitch, right? <laughs> Uh, but uh, someone who did take advantage of this extra time is the DM Panda, who donated $5 saying, Clap to the left, clap to the right, ring slather and repeat. <laughs> Love watching Ishmael's runs. And that is going for it's the Achievement Challenge run incentive, which is later today. And, and if you don't get that, if you don't get that reference, just go watch any of the UKSG Autumn uh, speedruns, because you'll probably see us on camera doing exactly that. Yeah, we are running out of time to meet the Laundry Hamper Therapy Incentive, though. So again, that is the run coming up next. 
which is, you know, Rumu, any percent, which will be done by Stephen Dewey. So do stick around. We are going to take a quick break while setting up. And in the meantime, you should make sure to stretch and also stay hydrated because it's been a long run. You've probably been here for a while. So we will be right back with more speedruns.